This video is brought to you by CoolStuffInc.com, where you can find cool stuff in stock. Hello, and welcome back to another day in the arena. It's me, it's CGB, and I'm coming at you as the one in best of one with the best, at least right now, of 2022 ladder. And that is mono green. You got to give it up for the green machine. While green didn't get the best cards in most of the cycles, like it didn't get the best dragon, it didn't get the best planeswalker, green from Forgotten Realms got the best pair of two drops any color received, and it's not particularly close. The first one is Werewolf Pack Leader. Green, green for pack tactics. When it attacks, you get to draw a card if you attack with power six or greater. Guys, if you're not attacking with power six or greater, with a mono green deck, you're doing it wrong. So this is just free card draw. And then it has a three and a green to become a five, three trample that isn't a human until end of turn. It's a good mana sink, but it's also in a deck, as you will see, full of mana sink. So the ability, that ability I don't use too often, but the threat of it, the threat of it is often enough to cause the opponent some pain. Next up, we have Ranger class, which best card in the set. Some have said uh, it maybe. I, I'm on the fence that it's the best. It is extremely good. This is a one and a green rare enchantment class. If you only get one class and you ever play green decks, this should be the one. So it creates a 2-2 wolf token upon entering the battlefield. Yay, hype, it made a body. It's two permanents in one. For one in a green, whenever you attack, put a plus one plus one counter on target attacking creature. So you kind of have this, I'll buy it later, Luminarch Aspirant which is pretty awesome in green. And then for three in a green, you may look at the top card of your library anytime. You may cast creature spells from the top of your library. So when we get around to it, when we run out of cool stuff to do with our mana and cards to play in our hand, we get Experimental Frenzy for creatures. I mean, when you're a green deck, you run a ton of creatures. So, I mean, that last class is amazing. There's card advantage all over this card and the sizing advantage, which is what creature matchups often come down to, created by level two, is everything the deck wants to do. It also creates some plus one, plus one counter synergy, which my build of the deck is going to try to lean into. So the those are the new cards that are rock stars. I'm also gonna introduce Layer of the Hydra really quick. I don't know if you actually need four, but this is a very good creature land that you can pump your mana into. When I said there were good mana sinks in the deck, this is a big one, and I mean a big one. When you have a lot of mana available and you can make a giant Hydra creature, and just slam over for five or six after a board wipe. Well, that's a GG. That's a good game. So Lair of the Hydra is the new creature land that goes into the deck. The other cards were basically selected for building around the two drops. We need a lot of power attacking so that the pack leader draws cards. We need constant pressure to keep Ranger class good. And we need a lot of creatures to keep Ranger classes fourth level good. So I've got four copies of Orin Reef ooze and this is the kind of wild card content play of the deck i'm not sure what the right card for the job is but i know that a card that is sweet is orin reef ooze because it plays with the plus one plus one counter synergy provided by ranger class and improved upon by inscription of abundance snakeskin veil and swarm shambler and the fact that we have a trampler in old growth troll or a trampler potential in werewolf pack leader so plus one plus one counters are very good and with the orin reef ruse you Ruse? Ooze. You throw a counter on one thing, then you attack with this, and you use Ranger class to put a counter on the Ooze, and then it triggers, you can stack the triggers so that the plus one plus one counter on the Ooze now gets another counter because it's now a creature with a counter on it. So Ranger class and Ornroof Ooze are a wombo combo that just makes your creatures huge very quickly. It's like having a deck full of Luminarch Aspirants, and in aggro matchups, Creature sizing matters, and this thing is a house. So that's why we're playing the Orin Reef Ooze today. We also have Kazandu Mammoth. Old Growth Troll is amazing in this deck, a card that never made it in the cut in standard is now an all-star, both because it kind of creates, it creates a ramp spell if it dies, that's sweet. It's a trample body. That's great with plus one, plus one counters. We have all those mana sinks I talked about, so the extra mana is always good. But also, when you sacrifice this old growth troll to make your troll warrior creature token, you can copy it with a Sika's Chariot. 
That's really cool. Being able to make multiple trolls with the chariot is very, very fun. And it's worth noting that even if this comes back tapped, the copy that you make is untapped when you create it. So uh, Isika's chariot also getting the nod to go very wide and just be a resilient threat. Since we don't have a great green planeswalker in this format, the chariot is sort of our substitute as along with the creature lands as threats that don't die to board wipes. Two snakeskin veils just to get them, four blizzard brawls because you need removal. But this, I think, if you're gonna play one deck in 2022, and this is coming from a blue mage who likes to control the battlefield, but if you're gonna play one deck in 2022, I hope you grab mono green, and I'd be crazy not to make a video of it while it's still kind of fresh and people are trying to solve this new format. So. That's the deck. I wanna take a quick moment to celebrate. I missed it yesterday. I was actually so focused on making the content, I missed it. But yesterday was the 888th day in a row for the streak. And if you're new around here, I have put out a Magic the Gathering related videos for, for now 889 days in a row. And it's a notable milestone, mostly because the next one is the last notable milestone. Once you hit 999 and the subsequent 1000, all the rest of the numbers are kind of a blur. From then, I mean, what are we gonna do? Celebrate 1337 day for Counter-Strike players just being leet? I mean, that's, that's throwback right there. So uh, this is kind of the last huge milestone on the path uh, to where if we hit it, number 1000, I'm told by somebody who did the math, I have not, that it will be November 1st this year, if we can continue. So uh, celebrate. If you guys have been around along the streak, if you know about when you joined, feel free to post it in the comments. I appreciate it. And thank you for all the support along the way. We'll do a member shout out at the end of the video to thank all the people who have joined as YouTube members, the patrons and the YouTube members, they, they keep the streak going. You guys are awesome. So now let's dive in. Let the big green machine nonsense begin. What will they have for us this time? It's a hand. I'm worried I'm not going to cast the troll, though. I guess we have Mega Swarm Shambler, though. Yeah, draw a forest in this hand is amazing. Draw other things, and hopefully they're just not more trolls and more four drops. Death Touch. They got me. They got me, guys. Should we just attack and try to trade? Nah. That is a card, though. Elves in the house. This inscription is probably going to be very important for killing a key elf. Yeah, this, this matchup is going to be about their key creatures, their elf lords, and size. So I don't think we want to trade a Shambler for a 3-2 that's mostly stuck as a 3-2 if we can cope with the lords. I think we need to keep this around. Alright, Herald is a good value card, but it's not one of the targets. Warmaster will be a target. And then there's, what's the other card? Canopy Tactician might be a target. But we're getting up to where our inscription's good. So I do... Are we willing to trade the Troll with the Blight Blade? It's one of our larger creatures, but at least it ramps. Something has to trade with this someday. I guess I'd prefer to trade a cat with it, since nothing here is bigger than a cat, so we'll just do this. All right, big turn. Let's see how they want to commit to the board. They have a War Master, which can make a lot of little critters. Yep. Double, okay, those Death Touchers are gonna to be a pain. How the heck are we supposed to trade for those? Deck has mana sinks galore. I guess we just attack with these cats. 
Would they kill the troll? I guess the troll comes back. Maybe I should have attacked with it sooner. Yeah, we have to be aggressive. I think I would change the way I played this a little bit, but I think we should be more aggressive. Should have played my land just to have the option of inscription. I'm assuming they're going to block with the Death Touchers. I think that's a bad assumption. All right, I'm a little off. I, I, I accept I'm a little off in this game right now, but I'm going to figure it out. I'm far from done. Mill three cards. You may put an elf or Tyvar card from the graveyard onto the battlefield. Put a plus one, plus one counter on each elf you control. Pog. All right. Um, don't want to kill anything in response because they just get it back. Let's see what they mill. Some Avengers. Actually, this, this is one of the best things they could have hit for us. And the reason is now when they block with their elves, they lose a life. So if we're going to smork them out of the game, who cares about their cards? Let's see if we can get some attacks out of them here. I guess they have the Haven to worry about, so they... Oh, oh yeah, they're trying to turn it up. Good. Good. They want some cards? Let's get some cards. Fight? I'm trying to think about... Okay, so... Where do we put the two counters? We can also bring back this troll. Hmm. Hmm. Try to find lethal here. If we bring back the troll, it fights something. And we take out one of their 1-1s. One That's pretty good. Right, take another point. Down to 12. So next turn, these all get plus one, plus one. Our opponent's at 12. It's a lot of damage. Let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. They play another Anthem, 11, 12, 13. We'll need some blockers, but we'll have a Troll. And we'll have a Shambler. Let's apply, let's apply the pressure, guys. Let's go for... Let's try to win. Let's get them so low that if another Elf dies... Well, they'll block with the Avenger, but... I was going to say, we try to get them so low that when an Elf dies, they die. If I were them, the Avenger would block the Haven, but we'll see. And then we put them at one. This is a non-token, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Ooh, they take it all. All right, gutsy. They go to one. We've got two blockers. They've got an Anthem. This has Menace, so we can't block this. If we block here, here, and they have a Lord. It's not lethal, so they need double Lord. Or Lord plus removal. There's removal. But they can't remove the Shambler without giving me 1-1s. One so block here. 1, 2, 3, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 10, 11, 12. Okay, if they have Canopy Tactician, they win. They have Tyvar. It's not the same thing. That doesn't grow the squad. And they still have the Avenger, so if one of these dies, they lose. I think that keeping this is just going to kill them. They say go. 
These all tap for mana. What do they have? I thought they might have a crippling fear for a second, then I remembered they'd still die to the troll warrior. What do they have? They say good game. I don't... Okay, they don't have it. Guys, I'm always wondering if there's a limited card I've never seen. A fog that they can cast with black mana. I... I have to think about those things, but there we go. We got it. Tense game. Tough battle with the elves. Number 28. Baller. Baller. But we're coming for your spot. Um, All three drops. Gross. But we try. I think we try. I mean, the three drops are pretty freaking powerful. If we draw any one or two drop... We only get one draw step to do it, but if we draw one or a two drop, this hand is really good. Yeah, okay. Well, that didn't take long. Just pulled a, a mirror immediately. Hit for one, ranger class. Werewolf, okay. Werewolf. Let's make a 4-4. Four -four. Let's see if the Blizzard Brawl is ready to roll here. Ranger class, do you have the land? Tap land, it's take, it's ambush, okay. So, we can ooze this thing and play a Shambler so that if they interact with this, it's gone. Who's the beatdown? Who's the beat down? Ooze isn't a good blocker. Let's set up for an epic attack next turn. Let's get counters on all of the things and go for overrun. Because next turn we can play Ranger class, level it, attack, put a counter on the ooze. Let's see if the opponent can interfere with us. All right, they have mana open. They might have some big plays here. In case our troll dies, we want untapped forests to move the troll two to make double mana in case that becomes a thing. Making this a 2-2 two -two isn't particularly great. And if they have an ambush, man, they held up a lot of mana, right? And they didn't use this. So they have something. There's no question they have something. So I don't think we attack with the ooze. I think we let the ooze get fought. The question is, do we attack with the troll then? The troll has pretty good trades here. But we can't play anything else. I think I attack with a troll, play another troll. Gotta be a little careful here. The opponent has nonsense. I can smell the nonsense. I can smell it on him. And they held up the mana, so they're priced into the play. Yep. So if we had gone for Ranger class attack with Ooze, there could have been quite the blowout there. I'm messing with that setting because the Ooze and the Ranger class, we want to make sure we stack them correctly if we use both abilities. All right. Troll on troll action. I think we just make sure we have the larger trolls. Get to level two here. We don't have very good blockers for a counterattack. Our opponent's at 15, though. So if they're attacking us, I guess that's good news. Don't want to play too cautious. Jeez. Are you sure you're killing it? See, they want to pump the Shambler. 
I think we leave them with a wolf token in their 4-4. I think we get rid of this for the card advantage. Maybe I'm crazy for that, but I think this is right. I think this is right. Get over here. All right, so we can level up Ranger class. Play another Shambles. Their attack looks better, but their life total is half ours, and we have a Hydra. They're really incentivized to get attacks here to start growing their creatures if they want to compete. And we don't want to block. We want to stay aggressive. They have four mana available. They don't activate the class. They might have another instant of some kind. What we revealed is not the best. But we can definitely send in a big Hydra here. How big is too big, though? I'm trying to think of what they might have. Inscription of Abundance, five. We want to put a counter on this. It goes six. We could also just bring back our troll, which I think might be better than sending the lair, but the lair does add so much pressure because they're only at 10 and it makes double blocking really bad. So there's the one. Then we have one, two, three, four, five, six. I mess up the math with my Hydra very often. So I got to do it right. So, if the opponent bl doesn't block this, they might die. So, there's some said to be, like, we can attack with this wolf, right? If the opponent trades and chumps here, we're pretty happy with that. If they block here and eat it, and put this here and take five, we're not very happy with that. If we attack all, it's not enough to really put them under that much pressure, so it's like this. Let's put the counter on the trampler. It also keeps the opponent from trading here. All right, they do have another ambush, but we get some swarmy tokens because we got that counter on earlier. The troll moves to another forest. The opponent, if they had one more mana, could bring back their troll, but they can't. And they still have to cope with the lair. Or the hydra, I should say. I call it the lair of the hydra because that's the name of the card, but it's a hydra creature. All right, Swarm Shambler taking on the world over here. Level three Ranger class. Another pack leader. We haven't drawn that, but our, our hand is held up pretty well otherwise. Just spare a Sentinel, sure. Still haven't hit a creature off our class, which is starting to get a little tilting. So I think this is a fight. So now this thing can rumble, and I don't think we want to activate the Hydra. I think we want to bring back the Trolls and grow the Shamblers. Look at that 4-0. Now we'll see if our opponent can pop off. They have Ranger class on level 3, just like we do, but we haven't revealed any creatures with it. They could play like six creatures here. Okay, more like three, but three would be a lot. There's a Sentinel. There is Blizzard Brawl for two more tokens. The go wide is working. All right. Let's make a 4-4. We're bringing back troll time, okay? We're bringing back the troll time. A GG. Because I don't think that they can win through the 4-4s. 
and the grown swarm shamblers in the attack. So that's going to be game number 28, Mythic. The dream of getting into the top 20 is going to have to wait. Three ordinary oozes. Man, you make it a four of in your deck, and this is what you get. All right, on the draw, I've got a mulligan that. We need to be quicker. I'll keep this. Um, part of me says I should put away a land. We're a long way from the lair of the Hydra being very good, but when you want it, you want it on turn one. I guess I'm just going to keep this curve. Just make sure that we hit two, three, and hopefully more stuff. This is Mono White, but it might be the Mono White Haven deck, which means we've got to kill him. We do not have an out to the combo. And we, we do have instant speed removal and inscription of abundance. I guess that's what we're holding out hope for. Doomscar is their best card against us, but Chariot and Troll are good against Doomscar. And they cast Revitalize into Revitalize, maybe trying to hit land, and they hit a tap land. All right, do we go for the ooze? We do have ranger class. If we top deck a land, we can level it up and have a pretty epic ooze time. But, okay, our opponent's not gonna doomscar this turn. If they doomscar, I'd love for them to hit the troll, not the ooze though. And the troll can crew the chariot. Let's, let's do it like this. I'm not sure if that's right. But it does threaten to draw some cards next turn, and it starts hitting them hard very quickly. Yeah, the portable hole is annoying. They find sciences, but they do miss the land drop. We hit our land. Alright, whenever you attack, put a counter. Okay, it did order it correctly, thank goodness. So we get a 4-4. Let's go. Let's apply that pressure. Top deck's a hole, or has a hole. It goes right for the Ranger class, which is the right call. That card is bonkers. Alright, they are hitting the lands. They really want to play the book next turn, so we need to make sure that we punish that. Down to 12. They play Doomscar, we play the Troll, we hit him with Chariot. All right, they play the book. So they're saying, kill me. And I'm saying, I can, I think. One, two, three, yeah. Brar. Dead book. Dead book. That's what you gotta do. You gotta race him. You gotta pounce on weakness, you have to punish the turn that they want to get the book on the battlefield. Which is usually turn 5 right before they do the combo, or turn 3 before you're set up. And get that damage. Dude, cruising at high altitude. Rainbow monkeys! We're trying to get into top 100, let's go. Man, playing Mammoth on the Kazandu side in this deck always makes me a little sad because we run so many lands, but you gotta be sure you curve out. Our opponent starts with the one drop of the format just for a Sentinel, which I had in this deck and just didn't find the oomph to be enough. Okay. Green, white, Sentinel, tribal. Do you have another one drop? Good lord. So many things. I want to kill this, but I don't know if I have the time. Are we a troll gamer? Troll gamer. But the opponent is getting well established so far. This gives us, though, uh, if we get to attack with both, we get to draw a card. Drawing a card might mean that we hit our land, where otherwise we wouldn't. If we hit our land, we can chariot or mammoth and brawl. 
That's gonna get annoying. That's gonna get annoying. Another takedown? Maybe. Uh, they can take down the troll, but that does give me mana. So I guess they have a choice here, and they've got to figure it out. They could also hold it up to interfere with Blizzard Brawl. All right, they pick the pack leader. Pick a pack of pack leaders. But they leave the trampler. Ooze. I've got to sell out on this trampler. This trampler has to go the distance. And then our chariot has to make troll tokens to keep trampling happening. Keep the trample happening. Also, hopefully I can use the Blizzard Brawl on the Ooze so I can attack with it next turn. They play Showdown. Showdown's busted here. I don't like our chances. I do not like our chances one bit. Not the draw we're looking for. I guess I attack with the ooze just to grow the troll and I play a chariot. Trolls gotta go the distance. Triple Chariot was not the answer you're looking for in face of a deck that goes wider faster. That's for sure. Alright. I'm used to having Gem Razor, so when my opponent just makes an artifact, I'm like, yay, I'll blow that up soon. But this shield, um, yeah. The shield, especially with being able to multi-block, is insane. Because you have to assign, like, two damage to each thing, which isn't going to work out for us, I can assure you that. They are at six. It'll take a miracle. It'll take a miracle, but we can try. All right, so Blizzard Brawl. Make this thing indestructible. Power up a chariot? Or play another chariot to power up this chariot to attack with everything? I guess so. Oh, look. It got us again. <laughs> it always does. They do have to throw a lot under this troll. I guess we also need to make sure that we don't auto-assign damage. Yep, kill the chariot. We could assign all four to the sentinel. I guess we should. It didn't give me the numbers to assign. Maybe it's still coming. All right. One, two, three, four. Two. Opponent, we could have dropped the opponent to one, I think, with the trample. No, the shield would have stopped it, right? Okay, end the turn. That was probably our window, but drawing another Blizzard Brawl could do it, right? An inscription might also make uh, the attacks interesting. Man, if we didn't have to pay that one for the frickin' shield, and we got to play the other chariot, and we got to attack with these... They probably just would have traded poorly, so I don't think it actually would have changed much. Looking at it closely. Okay. The block means that the... It, the block is not a trade because of the shield, so we should take it. They're at two. I mean, they're at... If we draw a snow land, do we just win? No, because of the shield damage prevention. God, it's so uh, it's so hard. It's so hard. All right, so we play this 
after combat? Play this as a land? Maybe? The cats just go under the bus here. Our opponent would go to one, but they would kill two cats. Not worth it. One, two, three, one, two. Here's the big blocks. All right, uh, do we kill the sentinel or kill two things? I think it's gotta be the two things, especially with the paladin class about to happen. Man, one more mana, one more mana. We don't have it though, but next turn we can make the troll token and use the chariot to copy it. I'm gonna try to go wider than them because they are at two. We just need to get two chariots through or two kitties. Let's go kitties. No, not more creatures. Pumps, nice. Um, creatures you control get. Did they already do that? What level are we on here? We're on level three. Oh, this is the double strike level. Okay. So if we power up this chariot, we win. We win. And we drew an inscription. Got to keep the one. Got to keep the one without summoning sickness. Spin the wheel, baby. One more time. What's this do whenever you attack? Irrelevant. Meow. Meow. Take two. Why not? <sighs> wow, what a game. These games are intense, dude. Intense. Soaring into the top hundred. Can we keep it going? Will we keep it going? Two Blizzard Brawls with Lair of the Hydra, but we got the Pack Leader. Man, these best of one cues, man. They, uh, they know who I is. I get so much love in the best of one. The 2022 players, they're showing up. It looks like Demir Control. That's going to be rough for us on the draw. Rough. Like a dog. Woof. All right. Also, having three fight spells is just really unfortunate if they don't play creatures. <laughs> yep, Thirst will get it done. Okay, four fight spells? This is getting absurd. Jesus. All right. I'm, uh... I'm a lack of a good card away from a scoop. Alright, Swarmy Shambles. Can Inscription the thing? I don't think we can risk a Hydra right now, and I don't think it's worth it for one damage, but we could send a 1-1. One, one. Well, every point counts. We've got to take risks. At least if they target it, we get a Critter, right? No, we don't. Because it doesn't have a counter, but... Boom, take one. All right. Even death is here. They play creatures. Lucky us. We need another snow permanent for this to even be indestructible, which is super sad.
It might be another even death. And if we fight with this, they just they just replay it, right? Because one of our creatures will have died. Okay, did nothing. Missed land drop. Okay. There's the land. So what do we want them to target? We want them to target the Shambler. Because they're going to try to break this up, right? Negate? Cool. I've got more. I, I have more. Much more. That worked. Dude, let's start hitting them. They might have a Shadows Verdict, but I think we need to hit them as hard as we can while we can. Boom, out of nowhere. They're down to eight, facing lethal. They send the heart. Is that... Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Did we pull this off? I don't know. It could be a bluff. It could be a bluff. Let's go. Dude, we oozed our way through that game. I have a feeling they were a land, an untapped land away from casting the Shadow's Verdict. And when you look back at that Jawari Disruption, hmm. One of the hardest calls to make playing these decks is when to play your Jawari and when not to. All right, on the draw, We'll give it a try. Lots of two drops and they're busted. All right, some kind of mono white aggro. They play Monk of Open Hand on two and no other cards. So they just drew this, but they also kept a hand on the mulligan, so they must have a lot of decent three drops. Hmm. How do we play against that? It's possible we want a Swarm Shambler here because of Skyclave Apparition. If they have Elite Spellbinder, they take out the troll. Skyclave Apparition also hitting Ranger class, leaving behind a 2-2 is better than it hitting the Shambler. Let's class up. But yeah, this is going to be interesting. Blue-white. It just got even more interesting. What's it gonna be? Take the wolf, okay. I'm a little surprised because I have a lot of decent stuff at that mana value. Well, blocking this is going to be hard. The troll is also really good, but I'm I'm thinking about like Skyclave Apparition. It would be nice to defend against it. This is actually a tough sequence right here. I say we start growing our creatures and use Swarm Shambler's ability to protect them. Target of spell and opponent controls. Yep. Okay. Not sure how many spells they'll have that target these, but I think it's a fine idea to get this going. Sparring Regimen. Extent. Okay, expanded anatomy. All right. I, I get what's going on now. Portable hole. That is a really good one here. That is a really good one to have in this spot. All right, so they're going to try to be the beat down. Which means we've got to put ourselves in a decent position position to race. We really need our mana. Um, 
because Inscription is an awesome card in a race, so we just need to draw one more land. But let's get the troll down. Let's attack with the Shambler, get it cooking. We'll have Veil open. They're going to go Expanded Anatomy on their Spellbinder. It's going to be a lot of damage. So we're going to need to fight it with either our troll or if we draw the land, like we get to do the full-on inscription and then we probably win the fight. Ooh, Monk class. Very tempo positive card. What are they going to bounce? They can't really bounce anything other than the Ranger class itself. Portable hole. Going after the class, I'm sure. Yep. Can't snake see him bail that. Good work around from the opponent. All right, if we get this to five, we don't have the Ranger class anymore, so we can't get this to six easily, but we're gonna have to blow out this expanded anatomy somehow. All right. Oh, tap land, not good. Not good. So yeah, I think we send you and then we do the fight maybe for the mana. And then we have three. Yeah, so we're going to play the Ranger class. All right. What you got? We've got a race. Like, sitting back is not going to do. They don't know about Inscription. If I fight now, I'll have three mana because I can play this off the class, but I don't get their anatomy, which I think they're going to go for. And if I don't have three mana available, I can't Veil an Inscription. So I think we just hold. They'll know something is up, but not everybody plays Inscription. It's a pretty forgotten about card. Why'd you have to be a tap land? Why? Why's it gotta be this way? Yeah, we also need Snakeskin Veil open for the Monk class. So if we only have two mana available, they could sequence in a way that really gets us. All right, second monk class, cool. Still not going, or they can go for the anatomy because it's their second spell of the turn, yep. All right, so this is going to go to five. So we should do it now. Now we gotta deal with this thing. We can get this to four, but not five. We can also remake the troll. Which I think has to be the play. God, this is awkward and close. Another troll. Yep, can't block it because of Veil, which they know about. Neutral. All right, don't draw a Sky Maul. We need to dodge a Sky Maul here. All right, what do you target? Targets you. Veil. Shut it down. They can bounce the token now, but they go for the Shambler. They're going to force me to block. All right, guys. All right, fam. Ugh. I needed a way to get this big enough to go through the monk. As it is, I can get it to a five, but not a six. That's probably going to cost us the game. Probably. But, let's play some cards.
So what's this do? At the beginning of your upkeep, exile the top card of your library. As long as it remains exiled, you may cast this card from exile as long as you've cast another spell this turn. Bizarre. It's a card advantage source, though. Opponent can't afford this attack. We counterattack for lethal. Do we do that anyway? One, two, three, four. So we make a four, four. We attack for lethal. But it's all in. It's all in. If the opponent has anything, and I'm not sure what it would be, but if they have anything, we do not win. Right? No guts, no glory. Don't think it matters. Don't think it matters. Their deck is cool. I want, I want to build that deck. That is another nail biter of a game. We are on a freaking roll today, baby. Four ranks. Brutal. I'd say you look like Mono Red, but they, we don't do that here no more. This is a really awkward hand, but the Ranger class, it's, it's Ranger class. Let's, let's keep this hand that we probably should not keep. Best draw in the deck is Snow Covered Forest, Snow Covered Forest. Sinkhole, all right. Uncastable two drop, doing it. Potion of Healing, all right. So another Haven Book deck, probably. Stumbling on mana. Man, anything that can go wrong will. We drew two straight uncastables. Instead of one of the, like, 20-some cards that would turn on our hand. It's an interesting selection. That pest has taken one for the team. Alright. So somewhere in here they want to play the book. We need to make sure we hit them really hard when they do. The Blizzard Brawl gets us through the Blood Mage. Well, at least we can still play the Brawl. Let's see what they pick after seeing my hella awkward hand. Please, pick any of these. They do not. Inscription's a good choice. Okay. Okay. So, if I put two counters here, and then another counter, everything can be too big. We do it now because we want the trigger from the Ranger Clan to do the job. Ranger class. Ranger Clan. That's some, uh, that's some meat. <laughs> oh, some big critters. All right, they're going to double block. Man, do they have Doomscar? Doomscar, blood on the snow, just all of that. Maybe they do. Tap land. Cube. Nanu's creature. Got him. Ah, uh, my token, though. My poor token. Um, let's see, we can fight this so that we smash right through and we can play another ooze. That's good stuff. Another Snowland and our Haven gets in there too. Our opponent's at 21, but that ain't gonna last. Down to 11. Blood on the snow? They've got the sixth land, but they're saying go. What does that mean? 
I don't know. Chariot's a good draw, I think. Triggers! Let's go, baby. You're gonna have to do something about these. They're getting big. Holy crap. <laughs> they reach for Haven. You need a chump blocker for this? Oh my goodness. It's not even a trade. You have to block the 11-11. You must have a removal. The verse. All right. This game goes on, but we got their haven. Just the... The barrage. The constant barrage. Of powerful threats. Make it, it's what makes this mono green deck notable, you know? It's what makes it do its thing. Uh, humiliate? You can't humiliate... I, I, I guess the humiliating thing is that my mono green deck can't cast my green cards. <laughs> That's what's humiliating. Oh, they're sending the heart. A lot of fans today, man. A lot of fans. It's bittersweet. Bittersweet when you beat fans. It, like, I'm happy to play you guys when you guys, like, send the heart, but I will tell you something. It takes just a little bit out of my spikiness. It takes just a little bit of the savoring of the victory away from me to know that I beat a fan. Just a little. Don't get carried away. And we are back for the post-game wraps. And I am sweaty. Gonna need a shower. These games were intense. But I didn't cut a dang thing from this video. It's one of those days you wake up just dreaming of. Let's check the stats powered by untapped.gg. Check out the link in the description both for the deck list and untapped GG. And if you download and try the companion app for yourself, it supports the channel a little bit. Dude. When I wake up every day, I don't know what I'm going to get. Mana screwed on the draw 15 times, or just maybe I'm going to play a bad deck or I'm going to make bad plays. And sometimes I have to battle my way through a lot of crap to make some content, but this baby just stepped right up, fought some really tense games in Mythic, and dropped 7-0 and on the competition. And, I mean, this... It, it's a killer. Um, it's an absolute killer. So, yeah, we went from 169 up to 60. That's what a 7-0 gets you. It gets you a little bit over 100 ranks. <laughs> Hard work, for sure. But those games were intense, and they were against a variety of opponents. Something is wrong right now, by the way. Um, for people having issues with untapped.gg, I'm not their tech support, but I do know that they receipt that the latest update mtga messed with the way that they fe feed the logs to companion apps like untapped gg so some of the stats like our matchups here are missing so they are i'm sure they're working on fixing it but uh it's not their fault it's not like they can flip a switch it was a curveball thrown to them by the the, the update for mtga when forgotten realms dropped so uh anyway i know a lot of people worried about that What's this deck? Is this a 7-0 deck? Did I get lucky? I am unquestionably got lucky, but I also don't think I had many of the deck's best draws. I think I had a lot of okay draws. I think that the sus card in the deck is the ooze, which I mostly played A, Arjuna, my Arena Craft podcast co-host recommended it, and B, people like oozes. Like, it, it's kind of a Timmy card in a spiky deck, so it makes for good content. But it didn't let me down. The damage that this sucker added up was really significant, and it's not just automatic to kill this card anymore with Bone Crusher Giant completely out of the format. So, maybe it's not as bad as it looks. If you don't already own this, I would not craft the four copies. I think that is totally reasonable to play other, just any other decent creature in the deck uh and not have four oozes that is I'm, I'm being honest with you that's mostly a content play so uh, i wouldn't craft this but i think everything else here is craftable and you'll have a good couple of months farming ladder and defense and winning games you also could go down to two faceless haven or two layer of the hydra you don't need four of each but i like having them for the grindy games where you just need to be attacking with something every single game. So that's my take on where green is at. As far as the meta goes, 
it's going to have to adapt a lot to deal with mono green and there's only so much you can do you can play a lot of good removal spells but this deck is like really good at fighting through them and creature lands are really good at fighting through them so you need to be able to play very large things probably large or larger than their things and then you have to be able to cope with cards like blizzard brawl i don't think that sweepers alone solve the problem so, uh, curious to see what you guys think. Have you played much mono green? Where does it fall for you? What cards would you use instead of the other cards in the deck, like inscriptions and oozes? Feel free to share information in the comments. It helps out other users. And to celebrate the 888th consecutive day of the streak, one day late, because I didn't pay enough attention yesterday, like I talked about in the intro, I'm going to do something I haven't done in a bit and shout out my YouTube members, because... They deserve it. Uh, the people who support the channel. I appreciate you guys a lot. There are 312 patrons on Patreon. There are 437 YouTube members. Think about that. That's less than a thousand people who support the channel. And there are over 40,000 views on nearly every video. This week, like this month, I've had between 80 to 100,000 views on the channel every day. That many people are watching the content. Less than a thousand are supporting it. So let's give them some time and some appreciation. It's been a while since I did this, so the list is long, but let's freaking go. Thank you very much to Sebastian, Francisco, Odvar, Joe, Jeremy, Alex, Jason with a Y, Josh, Dennis, QD Laddie, Maximus, Mike, Vaklov, John Ball, Alicia, eat, just eat, like food, uh, for, Forium Root. No idea. Travis, Melendros, Daniel, Travis, number two. Shapen will say this time. I try not to read all the last names because of how long it takes. Hammett, Brent, Yalo, Ashley, Axeman, Harlequin, Steve, Shanio, DKFDMW, Jeremy, Shane again. Spelled, well, Shane and Shanio. We've got Shane with an E on the end and Shanio with an O on the end. Mo, Legate, Dan, Nikolai, Jason, Cook66, Casimir, Alexander, Stairum, Tim, Belf the Implored, best name, you win, and RJ. Thanks so much for becoming YouTube members over the last few weeks as I kind of sorted some stuff out and, uh, you know, I haven't done the shout outs. I think I'm going to make it more of a rare thing because people just zone out and skip them, right? But if you make it more rare, maybe people sit through it a little bit more. And if you would like to support the channel, hit the join button below. There are some exclusive perks like access to my live stream VODs ad free on YouTube. So you don't, you get to use that 2x speed and you don't have to figure out how to use Twitch. All right. Thanks so much, you guys. I love you guys. I'm not going to get all emo though. This is a spiky channel. Thank you for watching this video. As always, I will see you in the next video. You're cool.